Hallelujah. Could you turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12? 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. It is written like this here. Now we have not received. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. Let me read it to read it for you once again. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. Now a person can be led either by the Spirit of God or by the Spirit of the world. A person can be led either by the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, or by the Spirit of the world. Now, what do we understand by the Spirit of the world? The Spirit of the world is the force which is standing against God's will and God's authority. That is the spirit of the world. A, ver a spirit which, is, which has made its purpose to take people away from God. So a person either can be led by the spirit which is in this world or they can be led by the Holy Spirit. Now, what does it mean to be led? To be led means to be guided by. Right? If you are in an unknown place, in a strange land, you would want some kind of guidance, isn't it? When you are entering a new place, you want to have some kind of guidance. In this world, we need guidance. So we are either guided by the spirit of the world or we are guided by the spirit of God. One of the two leads us, takes us forward. Being led means to be inspired by, motivated by someone or something. All of us are motivated by different things, isn't it? When you are young, you are motivated by different things. And when you grow up, you have a different kind of motivation. And throughout different seasons in your life, the motivations and the inspirations of life changes. When you're young, you would, you would be driven by um, a, a certain gadget. But when you grow up, you see that you are not anymore attracted by those gadgets. Right? When I was a young person, I was immensely uh, attracted by the things. I, I can say that it was kind of an addiction to me that I would buy gadgets. But now, when I look back, I think, oh man, that was a foolish thing to do. Now I don't do that. So in different seasons in our life, we grow, we mature, and we, we have different kinds of inspiration. So, and we are also inspired by different people. I still remember when I was starting my career as a content writer. I had someone in my life who was giving me guidance, who was mentoring me. And he was a helpful person. He had given me great perspectives in life, about life, how to live life, how to understand spirituality, how to understand the things of the world, things of God. How does the world work? He, he was a great mentor to me. But today he's not mentoring me in that way. Because I've grown from that point to another thing, which he is not unable to give. Now I'm mentored by a different person. So even in your life, you will, be, you will be guided by, mentored by different people, inspired by. You would look at someone's life and you would get motivated. See, when you are young, you are motivated by the actors, isn't it? 
Uh, you see them on the screen and you are like, man, I wish I could be like them. Uh, I wish I had that kind of life. But when you grow up, do you have that kind of attraction towards them? It reduces a lot, isn't it? We would be, we would, uh, we would be, um, we would appreciate what they are doing, but we are not inspired by them. Right? But we, when we are young, we would be inspired by their thoughts and ideologies, and we would want to live like them. But when you grow up, your ideologies changes. Right. So in each seasons of our life. We are inspired, we are motivated by different people. But mainly, a person is being led and motivated by one of the spirit. It is the spirit from God or it is the spirit of the world. As a child of God, the assurance that we have is that we are being led by the spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of us are happy that we are being led by God? Hallelujah. Right? We are led by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How do we know that if we carry this Holy Spirit? That's a bigger question, isn't it? We need to know and we need to be assured of the fact that we are carrying the Holy Spirit inside of us. So let's turn our Bibles to Galatians chapter 4 and verse 6. What does it say here? Because your sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. What is it written here? It says that because you are sons, because you are daughters of God, your sons and daughters of God, what did God do? He sent the spirit which was in his son, which is the Holy Spirit. How do we know that God, that Jesus carried the Holy Spirit. Remember the time when Jesus goes to the goes to John the Baptist and tells him that, hey, I want to get baptized. What happens after it? We see the Holy Spirit descending on Jesus in the form of a dove and giving out the testimony that this is my son in whom I'm pleased. So the spirit which was in Christ Jesus is the same spirit which is in us. Hallelujah. So what does it mean to carry the Holy Spirit? What does it mean? Can you, can you imagine the power and the authority that we carry in our heart because we are having the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we are carrying the Holy Spirit inside of us, we are being led into the presence of God. We are led into the things of God. What, are, what is pleasing to God becomes our goal, our motivation. Hallelujah. When we are carrying the Holy Spirit inside of us. Hallelujah. So what we need to do is that we need to check whether we are carrying the Holy Spirit or not. Are we listening to him? We can either obey the Holy Spirit or we can walk in rebellion. We can either obey the Holy Spirit. How do we know the Holy Spirit is speaking to us? We can hear it in our spirit. See, sometimes when you are doing something obviously wrong, have you heard that voice inside of you telling you, hey, don't do that? The world says that it's the conscience. But have you, have you had the prick in your spirit where you say, when, when you feel that, hey, what I'm doing is not right? What? So that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you and telling you that, that what you are engaging in is not right. So you have to be very careful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's mercy and favor is upon our life that God decided that we need to have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So when you read the Old Testament, you understand that the Holy Spirit came upon a person in for a certain period of time or for certain instances, certain, certain circumstances. All right? So there was a time when King Saul, when he was walking in rebellion, the Holy Spirit comes upon him and he begins to prophesy. Right? But you don't see him carrying the Holy Spirit throughout his life. 
And every time you read the Old Testament, you see that the Holy Spirit comes upon a person for a certain period. It would be, it would be for a short period. And that would enable him to do or enable her to do some, certain things. But now, for the New Testament believer, for the person who is under the new covenant of God, the covenant which is set by Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit remains in them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Holy Spirit remains in me. The Holy Spirit remains in you and he tells you to do the things of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, he takes you and leads you into the things of God. Hallelujah. And we have to make sure that we are walking in obedience to the Holy Spirit. If we are walking in rebellion against the Holy Spirit, then there is one thing which is certain, and that is destruction. Not just the destruction of our body, but also the destruction of our spirit. Your spirit is much more valuable than the body in which that spirit is housed. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have to look at your life, for many of us, it's going to be 50 years from now when our body is going to be completely destroyed. For some of you, it would be 70 years from now, 80 years from now. But one day, this, this body is going to be destroyed. It is good. It's going to go into the dirt. Hallelujah. But there is another part of us which is going to remain forever. And that is the spirit that God has given us. And there's going to be a day when we have to stand before the king of kings and give an account for our life. What are we going to do then? So in order to prepare us for that meeting, God has sent his Holy Spirit to us so that we can live a life that is pleasing to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are called to live in obedience to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every day, every morning when you wake up, ask this question to yourself. Am I carrying the Holy Spirit in me? Am I walking in obedience? Am I living according to the ways that he wants me to live? Hallelujah. The moment we decide to walk with the Holy Spirit, life changes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Life changes. You would see how the, how, the way in which he gives you wisdom to tackle every day. Sometimes we come across days when we are, when we don't have that thing to move forward, isn't it? How many of us have experienced that? The day you wake up and you feel like, man, it's all blue and there's nothing, there's nothing inside of you to motivate you. All right? That's when the Holy Spirit begins to work inside of you, with you, with His power and enables you to do supernatural things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even in your desperate times, even in your even during the time of discouragement if you have the holy spirit inside of you the holy spirit will begin to encourage you hallelujah hallelujah he will tell you things which you have not heard hallelujah he will tell you things which which is coming from the lord hallelujah from the heart of god and when you begin to live your life according to the heart of god I can promise you, I can assure you that you will receive the favor of God upon your life. You will receive the blessing of God upon your life. You will see closed doors being opened before you when you walk with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Because that's the power that you are holding inside of you. Hallelujah. You have a superpower. Hallelujah. Everyone say that I have a superpower and that is the Holy Spirit power. Hallelujah. That's the Holy Spirit power. He will enable you to do things that you have never imagined in, imagined in your life to do. Now, on the other side, you have somebody called the carnally minded person or the fleshly minded person. One person is a person who is 
led by the spirit and his spiritual. The other person is led by the demands, desires of the flesh. And that person is called carnally minded or fleshly minded. What is, what is it about this mind? The carnal mind thinks only about this world. Listen to me very carefully. The carnal mind thinks only about this world. There's nothing else that it thinks about. When a person is led by the spirit of the world, that person is led into carnality, into fleshly lifestyle. What is this fleshly lifestyle? As I said before, it is a lifestyle which is against, walking against the ways of God. It is in rebellion to the ways of God that is being fleshly minded. The carnal mind is affected by pleasures and problems of this world. When a person is carnally minded, they are affected by the pleasures. They are always looking for opportunities of pleasure that can that he or she can get from this world. Hallelujah. All right? They are always looking for how can I get the best out of this world. When they see a nice car, there's nothing wrong in that, right? You... You need to have godly desires. God, I believe that if you are dreaming about a car, God will give it to you. But when, when your mind is always taken over by that one thought, I need to have that car, I need to have that gadget, I need to have that thing in my life, that is being fleshly minded. Because what are we doing? Remember, led. what does being led mean? To be inspired by, motivated by, guided by. Right? So when a person is constantly thinking about that car, about that worldly thing, what happens is that they are affected. Their mind gets happiness, joy when they own or possess that thing. Otherwise, they are unhappy. But for a Christian, but for a child of God, what is his reason for joy? That we have God with us. Hallelujah. He's not affected by the lack of the pleasures of this world. He's not affected by it. If I don't have a car, it's fine. If I don't have a good house, it's fine. I have God in my life. I have the presence of God with me. That is what a spiritually minded person would do. He understands that this world is, is finite. This world one day is going to be destroyed by fire. And we are not going to exist anymore in this world. There is a life after this which is much more valuable, which is much more worthy and that's the life that I want to possess. So the spiritually minded person is always thinking about what happens after this world. The carnally minded person is always thinking about what would happen in this world. How many cars can I get? How much amount of money can I make? All these are good things, making money. If God has given you the grace to make money, go ahead, make money. But don't make it your God. Don't make it, make that thing your source of joy, your source of happiness, your source of contentment, your source of meaning, your source of purpose. Those should not be giving you purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God has got a greater purpose for your life. Think about this. How many, more, how many more years are you going to live in this world? Just think about it for a moment. Imagine 100 years is what God is offering you and is set for you. How many more years do you have? It's 
some of us have 50 some of us have, some of us have 60 some of us have 80 right that's the max now what happens imagine that day when you are when you know that this is the end imagine you are on that bed and you know that this is the end what happens next what happens next where do where, where would you go what would be your destiny now people say that all this is like the religious mumbo jumbo okay but what if that exists what would you do what are you going to do how would you plead your case in the court of god because you have to if there is a god and he exists you have to stand before him and give an account that's what the scripture says isn't there anyways you are not going to be immortal in this world even though we want to be why right? no <laughs> Yeah, we pray for come lord jesus rapture happen <laughs> what are we what are we going to do that day the carnally minded person is always thinking about this world this hundred limited finite period of time is what is in his mind her mind but what happens after this hundred years they are oblivious to it they don't think about it never occurs in their mind that hey there is a life after this so the when you are a spiritual man and when you are led by the holy spirit you are always reminded by the holy spirit that there is a life after this and for that you have to prepare your life for that you have to live your life pleasing to god hallelujah hallelujah the carnally minded person cannot walk in freedom or hope let me add some emphasis to it a carnally minded person cannot walk in true freedom and true hope what do i mean by it what is true freedom and true hope see everybody in this world is hopeful everyone there's no one i there's nobody in this world right now who is not hopeful in some sense they are hopeful that something good is going to happen when a person is taking that lottery what is in his what is running in his mind he's hopeful that he would hit the jackpot he's a hopeful person when you are stepping out of your house then you don't have to be be a believer you can be an unbeliever but a person when he steps out of his house what is his hope that he would return back to the same house without any scratch without losing a limb with the full body intact that's hope so everybody in this world is having hope and what is true hope true hope is that your life will carry meaning purpose that your life can be used to bless someone else's life that is true hope that is true freedom if you have to truly think and live your life you need to have true freedom in your life hallelujah and the true freedom can only be obtained by the communion with the holy spirit because he will tell you what is true and what is untrue hallelujah see how many of us are happy when we receive a gadget all of us are the first day when we get this we get that thing we are like we are exploring every setting we are getting into all the settings that is that we 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 would want to get it and we know that it exists there and we will do all kinds of exploration on that device after 5 days what happens after 5 days what happens 
the maximum you are doing is open WhatsApp, open the phone app, the contacts app, or probably if you are young, you are, you are scrolling on Instagram. That's the max that is going to happen. Huh? We have limited hope. We have limited excitement. But the moment you carry the Holy Spirit, the moment you are, you understand that I come, I need to have this communion with the Holy Spirit. And when He tells you that that, that this is this is temporary and this is this is eternal. The life that you carry is more precious. The purpose that you carry is more precious and it's more eternal. And it is eternal. You begin to change your perspective. Hallelujah. You're not working for gadgets anymore. You're not working for the next thing that is going to give you pleasure for a short period of time. It's just like this. The pleasure, if you have to... If you have to understand the, the, the duration of the pleasure... Or the happiness you derive out of certain things, just like this, the snap of a finger, it's gone. But something else is there which is much more valuable, which is your spirit, which is the call of God over your life. I believe everyone who is here, you are carrying the spirit of God. When you're carrying the spirit of God, there's a call upon you. You are here with a purpose. You are here with something which is much valuable, which is of a greater value than anything you can find in this world. When you find your purpose, let me tell you, you will see life in a different way. Hallelujah. For me, I have found my purpose. For me, the greatest purpose is when, I, when, I, when I'm with the people and helping them to understand the message of God. For some of you, it would be a different purpose. But what is your purpose? What is that one thing that makes you jump out of your bed and do and run behind it? What is that one thing? Hallelujah. So a carnally minded person, he's always thinking about money. That is what makes him jump from the bed. Or I have to work. Otherwise, I will not get money isn't it huh? if i don't if i don't appear for my work today then my salary is going to be cut so you start working for money and many people even christians are trapped in this that i have to make some money i have to make money and money is not enough you have 10 lakh in your bank account. It's not enough. You need 25. And when you get the 25, that's not enough. You need to make the 50. Or even that's not enough. You need to make the next 25. And it goes on and on and on and on and on. Somewhere we have found security in this paper. Hallelujah. But life is more than that. Life is more than running behind that currency note. I know some of us are lacking severely. I know some of us struggle to make this note. But let me tell you, there is a greater life for you, which is much more precious, which is much more worthier than running behind these notes. Don't make your life. Don't use it for running behind this thing because it's temporary. The carnally minded person, he's running behind the temporal things. Things which have a short span of life. The carnally minded person does not submit, subject itself to God. The carnally minded person does not Submit, subject itself to God. When a person is walking with a carnal mindset, can a believer have a carnal mindset? Check the fruit. 
you know the tree by the fruit it produces. So a believer says, a person who say, claims to be the child of God, if he says that I'm a spiritual person, look at what they are producing. All of us have to do. I have to do that myself. I have to check what is the fruit that I'm producing. What is the pro produce of my thoughts? Because whatever is thinking, whatever is being played in here is what comes out. All right? So we have to check. Hallelujah. Why are we checking it? Because we, we have a greater purpose. Because you know that your life is precious. That's why we are checking it. Not to condemn. Not to go into a guilt trip. That's not the reason why you are checking on your life. Whether you are carnally minded or you are spiritually minded. You want to walk with God. You want to fulfill God's purposes for you in this world. Amen. That's the reason why you are doing it. Hallelujah. Why is having a carnal, fleshly mind, is mind dangerous? Why is having a carnal, fleshly mind dangerous? The first thing, it cannot please God. Let's read Romans chapter 8, verses 7 and 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 7 and 8. What is it written here? Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile. What is hostile? It is in enmity. It is in rebellion. Hostile toward God, for it does not, listen to this very carefully, for it does not subject itself to the law of God. For it is not even able to do so. It does not subject itself to the ways of God and it is not able to do so. And those who, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. This is what the scripture is saying here. Now think about it for a moment. The moment we carry that fleshly mind, the carnal mind of possessing things in this world, being driven by the things of the world, being motivated by the things of the world, being inspired by the things of the world, the scripture says that that mind cannot subject or submit itself to the ways of God. And the consequence of that decision is that it cannot please God anymore. I cannot please God. I cannot be in both. I cannot be carnally, spiritually minded person or spiritually carnal person. It's either carnal or it's either spiritual. There is no gray area. Right? So that mind, the scripture says that it cannot, it is unable, it does not have the ability to please God. What does pleasing God mean? To bring joy, to fulfill his call. That is what pleasing God means. To bring joy to his face. That is what pleasing God means. Hallelujah. It cannot do that. So when you, when a person is carnally minded, it is dangerous for that person because it, see, when you're not, when you're not pleasing God, you don't receive the favor of God. Why? Right? When you're not pleasing God, you're not receiving the favor of God. 
So when you study the scripture, when the, when the favor of God is upon a person, every closed door is open before him. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of us know Joseph? Was God's favor upon him? Yes. He had to go through difficulties. But was there any door closed before him? In every closed door, God came and opened a door for him. His brothers thought that this guy is restricting us from receiving the blessing of our father. So what did they do? Sold him, put him in a pit, sold him to the Egyptians. Now in, the, in Egypt, he is a slave. And then he works under Potiphar. And in Potiphar's house, because of Joseph, everything is blessed. And there is favor of God upon that household. Next, what happens? Potiphar's wife puts him in the jail. And then, again, a closed door. What happens over there? God appoints another person to take him out of that place. See, every obstacle in your life, if you have the favor of God, you will have open doors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter how bad it is, no matter how heavy the door is, you will be seeing an open door when you are walking under favor. And in order to receive the favor of God, you need to please God. And how do you please God? By having a spiritual mind. A mind to love God, a mind to serve God, a mind to walk with God, a mind to be intimate with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to please God. Why is it so dangerous to have a carnal, a flesh mind? Because it's under bondage. It's under bondage. It is restricted. That is what bondage means. It cannot move freely. Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am fleshly sold into the bondage of sin. Bondage to sin. For we know that law is spiritual. Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. For we know that law is spiritual, but I am fleshly. This is Apostle Paul. When you are having a fleshly mind or the carnal mind, what happens? You are sold into the bondage of sin. There is no real freedom in your life. There is no... They, the, your, your existence in this world does not have any meaning because you are always bound... By the sin. The sin restricts you. you. Cannot walk in. In freedom anymore. How many of us have been restricted by sin? You don't have to put your hands up. But you know that you have been restricted by sin. Isn't it? When you, when you walk out of your house. And when there are sinful thoughts running in your, in your mind. There, you're not able to do certain things the way that you want. Sometimes we want to have a clean mind, isn't it? We want to have a clean mind. So a carnal person, I'm not talking about you, but the carnal person is always under the bondage of sin. It weighs upon him. And he's unable, she's unable to live a life of freedom. Anger is a sin. Uncontrolled anger is a sin. Now when a person is, is having uncontrolled anger, what happens? How many of us have felt guilty after having a bout of anger? And we become angry at somebody and then we have a guilt feeling, isn't it? Oh, I wish I didn't do that. I didn't say that. And you, you sometimes say, "I oh, I didn't mean that. But in the anger, we say that. And the sin 
weighs us down. It, it puts us into a guilt trip. And we are unable to have that freedom with the other person, isn't it? If I'm angry at you, or if you were angry at somebody, and you said nasty words at that person, the next time you meet that person, you are unable to establish that free relationship with that person, isn't it? Because back of your mind, you have that guilt in you. That is what bondage of sin means. You're, you are restricted by sin. You're not able to move freely. It cannot understand why is it so dangerous to have a carnal mindset. It is unable to understand spiritual life. Romans chapter 8 verses 14 and 15. Romans chapter 8 verses 14 and 15. But a natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him. But the natural person or the carnally minded person, what happens to him? Does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. But the one who is spiritual discerns all things Yet, he himself is not discerned by anyone. But a natural person, a carnally minded person is unable to understand the spiritual life. Is unable to understand why these people are so devoted to God. Why do these people have faith in God? A carnally minded person does not have it in him. He doesn't understand. He or she doesn't understand why certain people are devoted to God. Why has this person made his purpose to please God? A carnally minded person would say, hey, don't do that. That's foolishness. They say, you only live once. YOLO. Right? And they would say that he enjoy, you enjoy the time that you have in this world because the carnally minded person is not able to see a life beyond this world. It is limited to this hundred years. So it says that, hey, do whatever you want in the way that you want, in the manner that you want in this world. It cannot understand the spiritual life. It cannot understand. That's a dangerous thing of being carnally minded. How do we know if we are carnally minded? How do we know that if we have something in us which is carnal, which is not of the God, which is not of God? Let's read Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. Galatians. This is a standard for all of us, whether we are living a carnal life, or whether we are possessing a carnal mindset. Right? Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are sexual immorality, impurity, indecent behavior, idolatry, witchcraft, hostilities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and the things like these of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. How do we know whether we are carnally minded? Huh? It's evident. If we find in us one of these things, that's the place where we have to repent. So how do we come out of this carnal mindset? If we found ourselves in one of these things, how do we come out of that? The first thing, repent. 
first john chapter 1 and verse 9 first john chapter 1 and verse 9 what does it say here if we confess our sins he is faithful and righteous to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness from all unrighteousness he will Forgive and cleanse us. Amen. Hallelujah. If we found ourselves in possessing one of those carnal attributes, carnal character, then your solution, your answer to come out of that is this first repent. Hallelujah. Go to Jesus. Get in the presence of God and say, God, I have sinned against you. I have possessed things which are we shouldn't be possessed. We shouldn't be carried in my life, but I have done that. Forgive me. And the scripture says that he is faithful and righteous to forgive us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Secondly, renew your mind. Renew your mind. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Romans chapter 12. And verse 2. And do not be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. What should we do? Renew. Everybody say renew. Loudly, renew. Renew once again. It should it should get it should it should be inside your heart today, all right? So we're going to say it loud once again. Renew, louder. Renew, once more louder. Renew, renew your mind. Hallelujah! How do you renew your mind? It is by meditating on the Word of God. What does this? What does Psalm say? Lord, I will meditate on you so that I will not sin against you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read Psalms chapter 19. And verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations, the things, the thoughts that I'm having in my mind be acceptable to you. Let there be no sin found in my thoughts. Let there be no ungodly thoughts found in my heart. Let there be pure things found in my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how you renew your mind. Hallelujah. Submitting your thoughts, your your life to God. Amen. Renew. Thirdly, receive the mercy and grace of God. Receive the mercy. Mercy is the forgiveness of God. Grace is the enabling power of God to walk you, to help you walk in holiness, to help you walk in godliness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Fourthly, remember your current state. What you are now, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. What is your current status and who you are? What does it say here? And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too all formerly lived. All, right? all of us lived in that kind of lifestyle. But what happens now? Lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging the desires of flesh, and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Now you have been made alive. 
verse 2 what does it say you have been made alive hallelujah hallelujah you have been made alive in Christ Jesus hallelujah so you're not un walking under the slavery of sin anymore you are not conducting your life according to the lusts of your previous life anymore but now you are living a different life that belongs to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walk in this new life. Hallelujah. Let me read it. Read the two verses more so that you would understand. But God being rich in his mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive. Made us alive. Verse 5. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 5. Even when we were dead in your what? In our transgressions, we were we are made alive together with Christ. Hallelujah. And raised up with him, seated us with him in heavenly places. Hallelujah. That is your current state. Hallelujah. Once you were dead. Don't live as dead people. Don't live as dead people. What does it mean? It means don't live as people who are spiritually dead. A person who is unable to understand the things of God. That is a spiritually dead person. Amen. Right? So the scripture is saying that now you have been made alive. How? Through the power of God. And now what happens in your life? You are more spiritual. You are a spiritual person now. Amen. Now you have to walk according to the laws of the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Fifthly, change your mindset. Sorry, set your mind. Set your mind on the things of God. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. Set your mind. Everybody, let's read it together. Right? Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. Why does the scripture encourage us to set our mind to look at God on the things above? Why does it say? Because what is eternal is the things of God. The things of the world is finite. It is purposed for destruction. Hallelujah. The beautiful house that you are building today is set for destruction. The car that you have brought, that you are trying hard, you're working hard, in 20 years, it has to be scrapped. It is not forever. The person that you are waiting to fall in love, in 20 years, in 30 years, that person is going to have wrinkles on their face and the person is not going to look as beautiful, as handsome as you want. And one day they will become frail. They will die off. So the scripture says, set your minds on the things above. Because what you set here, the mind which is set on here, it's not going to be everlasting. Hallelujah. Can we all stand in the presence of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.